the family of God. And we just want to thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit that's here to teach, to instruct, to correct, to show us things that uh, is yet to come. We see the world being stirred, Father, so we know things are happening in the arena of heaven and on earth. So, Father, we thank you that we can be in tune with thee in every respect. And we just give you the praise and the glory as our heart is open to receive the word of God. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I was thinking about John 3, 16. I love that verse of scripture. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. And when I read the scripture, it's like God talks back to me and say, well, do you so love the world, Bob? Do you so love the world as I so love the world? And that spoke to my heart. I said, Lord, I want to. I need your help. How many of you know we need his help? How many of you know he sent the Holy Spirit to help us? And I hope that I can say that I so love the world. That's why I give. You know, people say, well, they're looking for some law that commands them to do this or commands them to do that. But we do have a law. It's the law that Jesus gave. And that is a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And then I read that and I say, Lord... Is that operating in my life? Wow, do I love others as you have loved me? Now, you know, that's a challenge, isn't it? And how many of you know we're all challenged in that area? And so you read the scriptures and you see the overall plan of God that we're not to show partiality. That's one thing that, that Susan and me have, have, have tried not to do, to show partiality with our children or to show partiality in the body of Christ. And sometimes we might commend somebody, and, and then other people might think, well, they don't ever commend me. Well, you know, your day will come. How many of you know that your day will come if you be patient, you know? And so people say, well, why did Jesus come? Well, we know that he came to save that which was lost. And by the way, that was us. We were lost, undone. Satan had us in his uh, uh, grip. And uh, I want to read, read something here I think that is so important. Because uh, Charles spoke on this one time. If you know Jesus, you know God. And uh, I want to read this in 1 uh, John 4 verse 1. And you can put that on the board. 1 John 4. Beloved. Now, when you read the scripture, who is that beloved? Say me. Yeah, the people of his day, beloved. We are beloved. We are loved. We are beloved. Do not put faith in every spirit, but prove, test the spirits to discover whether they proceed from God. For many uh, false, <coughs> excuse me, prophets have gone forth into the world. Now, I want to read that. How many of you know, first we are to check our own spirit. I want you to hear me now. Always check your own spirit when you're about to do something and make sure that you are doing what Jesus would do. How many of you know, sometimes you can get so mad at people, you want to send them to the moon. Now, I know nobody's in here like that, but don't lie to me. I know that you've been there. <clears throat> the moon can only hold so many people, so give it a break. But God, God has power, but he is love. And I'm convinced, and, and I think we've tried everything for 60 years to get people set free, but I'm convinced it'll be the love of God that will finally seep in, in our being, that will set us free. You might not understand about love, but when that love controls you and, and, and motivates you and, and, and Simmons, Simmons, that's a new word I'm inventing, <laughs> stimulates you, you're, you're able to overlook a lot of things. 
Our, our brother mentioned that, Spencer mentioned that about the leaven. Of course, everybody in here don't have any leaven in them, but, but there may be a little bit of leaven in you, and, and you've got to recognize when it manifests. How many of you understand that now? And put it off. Put it off. You don't need to get condemnation about it. Just put it off and put on the new man. <clears throat> so that's important. But listen to what he says. Do not put faith in every spirit, but prove, test the spirits to discover whether they proceed from God. So first we want to check our own spirits. Anybody listening out there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we don't want to do that. We want to check the other person. Phil, are you okay, son? You okay? Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Whether they proceed from God, for many false prophets have gone forth into the world. Now let's read a little bit further. Verse 2. Put verse 2 up there. By this you may know, perceive, and recognize the Spirit of God. How? Every spirit, this is how you recognize it if it's the Spirit of God. Every spirit which acknowledges and confesses the fact that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, actually has become a man and has, be, has come in the flesh is of God. Has God for its source. That's why Christmas is so important. Because that little baby was God being manifest in the flesh. It's called incarnation. I mean, think about God that created everything. Now, Jesus Christ is every bit of man, but he's every bit of God. Now, just think about it. You'll meet people, and I guarantee you, if you're witnessing during the week, you will find people that don't believe that Jesus Christ came to flesh. They don't believe in the Bible because, you see, the God of this world has blinded them from the glorious light of the gospel. <clears throat> so that's why we have to pray and pray for them and be patient with them and love them where they're at. Now, how many of you know that uh, there was a time in your life you didn't have that type of uh, uh, patience and if they and you know and you uh, if they didn't believe like you believe you want to hit them in the head with your bible in love of course <laughs> see i used to have this belt and every time i'd win somebody i'd i'd, I'd mark my belt I, I i won one see i won another you know and uh but but you see to love the unlovely that's the test of your faith. That's to see if you really have the love of God. Now hear me out now. <laughs> that is the acid test that you love the brethren. See, and see, I learned that a long time ago. And let me tell you something. There's people that do things in your own family that you don't like. Do I hear amen to that? Amen. Uh, there's people that does things probably in this church you don't like. And then a lot of people said, okay, we got some amens out there. I have to be patient as their, as their shepherd to shepherd them. And our kids, many times when we were teaching our kids, uh, they would do things. But, you know, a lot of times you just have to let them uh, do the thing. I mean, I mean, there's some things you got to stop them, you know. If they pulled a gun out and pointed at you, stop them. <laughs> but there's certain things you can be patient with. And the Bible talks a lot about patience. We had a, a Adam here. He talked about one of the characteristics that in these last days that we're going to have to have patience. Don't be too quick to draw. Learn to be patient. How many of you know God is the final conclusion? How many of you know we're all standing at the judgment seat of Christ and God will judge us? You see? And, 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 and today some folks really need to get off the judgment seat and let Christ sit back down and judge. So if you're on the judgment seat, get off of it. Amen? 
you know. Look, Christ judge. He sees everything. He knows everything. Someone I've heard, I know years ago when we were kids, I'm sure glad that mom doesn't know about this. But how many of you know that many times she did, but she just overlooked it and just prayed for you? Aren't you glad you got people that prayed for you? Don't you? Aren't you glad that while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you? Are you glad that he was patient for you? And he's patient right now for some folks to grow up and get rid of their childishness and grow up in God and be an example to the world. Preach it, Bob. I believe it will. Susan and me, we help each other out. And uh, I thank God we do. I think she helps me more than I help her, but two's better than one. And we've learned that when, when we have devotions and we read a verse of Scripture, and we say to one another, where do we fit in that scripture? I'll give you an example. Turn to Matthew 11, and we saw this in our class this morning. Verse 28, 29, and 30. Let's read that because that was so powerful. Phil did a great job in sharing and, and, and just letting the Holy Spirit flow through him. And Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. Sometimes you'll have to say, Lord, you just have to cause me to rest. This thing is getting on me, but good. And the Holy Spirit will go to work. But you've got to give it up. Giving things up. Always, a, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that also that the life of Christ might be manifested in these mortal bodies. And I remember a little girl, she had a, somebody uh, had gave her a little nice little bracelet, it was 10 cent store, you know, you get these little bracelets for about 10 cent, you know. They might be a little bit more now, I don't know, I hadn't bought one lately. But anyway... And she had that little into her hand, and her dad says, well, give that to me. And she said, no, it's mine, Dad. And Dad said, well, that just, that just cost a, a 10 cent, honey. Give it to me. Open your hand and give it to me. She said, no, Dad, it's mine. So for three nights, she'd come in and have prayer with her and said, are you willing to give me the little bracelet yet? About the third night, she said, okay, Daddy, now notice this. When she opened her hand, he removed that little t 10 cent bracelet from her hand and put a hundred dollar bracelet in her hand. And folks, let me tell you something. Sometimes you got to give some things up, release it, open your hand, let God put something with a value in your hand. Amen. Come on, church. Don't chop me down. Sometimes we hold on to these grievances and we hold on to these uh, things, a life of pride and arrogance and stuff like that. You just got to turn it loose and take on the yoke of the Lord. Come to me, all ye are laboring, heavy laden, and holding on to this and holding on to that. Boy, as a pastor, Susan and me had to learn to give up a lot of things. But you know, we found the Lord would always give us something better. Always something better. Not butter, but better. We learn not to get bitter, but get better. Uh, Phil said something a while ago about bitter, better, butter, bitter, better, but butter, 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 bitter. <laughs> These are things that we have to learn. This is in our everyday life. So listen to this, and uh, I, I want I want to let's go to the next verse. That's a good too. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Yes, we're saved, but we got to learn about the Lord. We got to learn how he walked, how he talked, how he acted, how he reacted. For I am gentle and meek and humble and lowly in heart. Now stop right there. When I read that, I have to ask myself a question. Is that me? Now you ask the question, is that you? Are you gentle? Are you meek? Are you humble? 
Are you lovely, lowly, in heart? I didn't hear nobody say yes. <laughs> well, if you're not yet, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Asking, Lord, I need to be more meek. You know, <clears throat> Susan, we've been married 64 years, and we started out, and I was a foreman at, at the air base. And uh, when you come home, I would bring my foreman ship home. And Susan and me be, be outside working in the yard. And I would say, um, uh, Susan, get that wheelbarrow over there and bring it over here and fill it up with these leaves and take them over there, okay? Ooh. <laughs> See, you, 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 there's so many things we have to learn. You can't speak to your wife like that. She'll be a nervous wreck. And besides that, when you finish that, it's about time for lunch. I'm getting hungry. You have to learn to be meek and humble and speak. Now, let me tell you how you know the Lord's worked in your heart. Sometimes I make that mistake. Have you seen this knot back here? And she's so precious. Because, see, that's been worked into her life. She's gentle. She's meek. She's humble. She's lowly in heart. She'll say, honey, I'm your wife. Boing. Oh, that's right. You're my wife. You're not the guys at the base where I worked. So I had to learn to do that. Because you know what? We can kill each other's love. In our families. And, and, and it's just the old man that manifests at times. But that's why the Bible says put it off. It was dealt with at Calvary. Just reckon yourself to be. De but see, sometimes we got to catch our own selves. How many has ever spoken words and then you said, why did I speak that? How many of you have ever done that besides me? The rest of you are lying. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Come up here and I'll lay hands on you. Cast that demon out right now. We all make our mistakes. That's why we got 1 John 1, 9. Oh, thank you, God, that you made provisions that we can get back in line and keep on walking in the Spirit. See? No, we don't, ha we don't have to sin. But if, if that little word if, I have, if we do, we have a promise, provisions made. And we, it's a condition. And the condition is if we confess it, God is faithful. God is just. Now, stop right there again. Are you faithful and just to forgive people when they trespass against you? Do you forgive him? You, you forgive all the time. All the time. Yeah, you have to do that. Because if you don't, you get bind, you bind yourself up. And you say, where are you at, Lord? Lord, where are you at? Oh, thank God. See, here's what people don't understand. Yes, you're saved. You can't get no more saved. You've been justified, sanctified. You, yeah, one day we ain't glorified yet, but we will get glorified. But you're sanctified. You're justified. Can't get no more justified. You are, all your sins are forgiven. They're as far as the east is from the west and so forth and everything. Everything's great. But as you walk this road down here, how many know that uh, your feet get dirty? You walk. You can get dirty in your walk, and you need to sit down and let Jesus wash your feet again. See? No, Lord, no, no. Wash me all over. No, you're clean all over. Just need your walk cleaned a little bit there now. And get it all cleaned up and get on, keep on walking. Keep on talking. You know, we have three daughters, uh, Susan and me. 
And every one of them is beautiful and wonderful. And they didn't understand that uh, our oldest daughter, and, and if you've got kids like that, you have to talk to the youngest ones. They, they, Tammy said, well, why can't we do what Patsy's doing? Because you're not that old yet. When you get older, then, you know, we'll get you a rocket, too. <laughs> so they, they, oh, you're not showing partiality. No, you're not showing partiality. See? So according to our age, and, and you've got to remember that and talk to your kids about that, that you're not showing partiality. So that's one thing that we had to learn in the church, that, you know, if God has not called you... Uh, in a particular area that we all have gifts and we all have different gifts. That's why God put us all together where each person can have the freedom to operate in their gift. But don't try to operate in somebody else's gift. I said don't try to operate in somebody else's gift. Amen. Mm -hmm. Stay in your own lane. Operate in your own gift. That's very important to understand. And thank God. But see, so many times, if we're not careful, we can get jealous. Well, look, look at their, what they're doing. Well, look what you're doing. You got your gift. Operate in your gift. Let them operate in their gift. Be happy about it. Be excited about it. Two's better than one. Learn to have a free spirit, a free heart. Free from all partiality, free from all guilt and condemnation, and free from uh, judging and, and all kind of garbage that can come into our lives. See, it's an everyday situation you have to do. Yes, you're saved. If you die, you're going to heaven. How many takes a bath every day? Well, once a week. Okay. But you, you, you know, wash your hands every day. You wash your face. I mean, it's, it's so simple. I don't know why people get all screwed up, do you? Very simple. It's not complicated. In the natural, if you got dirt on your hands, what are you going to do? Smear it on your brother? No, you're going to wash it. Wash your face. Take a bath. Whether you need it or not, yeah, I mean, you can tell you start stinking. You know, if you see your wife, when you reach out to kiss your wife and she starts backing up, you know something's wrong. Same thing in our spiritual life. We miss the joy of Christmas. We miss the joy of walking with God. Someone says, what's up? What's this? What's that? What? Man, I'm walking with God every day, 24-7. I'm walking with God. It's exciting, 24-7 relationship with God. And somewhere if I mess up, I know he has provided for me to get cleaned up, wash myself, and come in and say, how do I look now, Susan? How many of you understand what I'm saying? I'm preaching truth to you now. Listen to your pastor. I've seen too many people walking around with their head all down and down this, down that, mad at themselves, mad at everybody. Life is too short. Say, life is too short. Let me tell you something. I don't know if you know what's happening in the world today, but I'm going to tell you something. Something big is happening in this world. This world is being shaken from its foundation. I shared a little bit uh, Wednesday night about the next war, Gog and Magog war. So let's live each day and realize that Jesus sees everything. Uh, put uh, on the board Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. Boy, I used to read this verse and I tell you, I said, Lord, you see everything. Look at this. And not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight. Everything we think, everything we feel, everything we do, everything we don't do, he says it all. And still loves us. But all things are open, exposed, naked, and defenseless to the eyes of him with whom we have to do business with. I'm putting that in there. 
So with that in mind, I say, Lord, I sure need your help today. I thank you for coming as a little baby. You grew up. You ministered three and a half years. You died on the cross. And you went back to heaven. But you didn't leave here. Leave us here hopeless. You sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives. And he lives in us. And he's been given to us to help us in our walk down here. To walk upright, love one another, teach and preach the gospel. Because at the end result, if we don't clear the matter here, he's the one that we've got to do business with when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Put that on the board. Because I want us to start a new year totally, absolutely trusting God in everything we do. Everything we do. Hebrews, I mean, uh, what did I say? Huh? Oh, yeah. 2 Corinthians 5.10. 2 Corinthians 5.10. For we must all, say, everybody say all. all. Say, that's me. Yes. That's right, all. Appear and be revealed as we are. Ooh. Uh. Before the judgment seat of Christ. So that each one may receive, oh, hallelujah, his pay according to what he has done in the body, whether good or what? evil that means that as we go up there we may have some evil that we got to give an account for that's what that means considering what his purpose and motive have been and what he has achieved been busy with and given himself and his attention to accomplishing We're busy this time of the year shopping, and you know, all that's good. God is not against anything. But how many of you know when you shop, be thinking about Jesus? That's what I do. Whatever I do, I think about Jesus as I walk along and, 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 and talk with people and, and just be with people. My, my, my consciousness is always on the Lord. Everybody say, my consciousness, my consciousness. is always on the Lord. That's powerful thought because you're drawing nigh to him. And if you draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to you. See, that's a secret. Not many people understand that. So the biggest thing that we want to make sure as we end this year, that we have forgiven everybody. We have no art against nobody. And if you do, God understands that. Just simply confess it as sin. Get your cleansing. And let's start the new year out all cleaned up, ready to go for a new year. That's a powerful thought. And God has made provisions that we can do that. I tell you, I love him this morning. Time has run out. These are certain thoughts. Yes, Christ came. But he's not that little baby anymore in the crib. He is seated at the right hand side of the Father. Yes, and interceding for us, by the way, because he's our great high priest now. And he intercedes and prays for us. And he sees everything in our heart, everything we do, everything we don't do. He sees it all. And I tell you what, I have nothing to hide. Now, hear me now. Do you have anything to hide? Do you have anything to hide? Because you, you can't hide it. He knows it. He sees it. So be, yeah. So be that free with your Heavenly Father and be open to Him and say, thank you, Lord. You see everything. And I know i got a few things, Lord, I don't like myself and you don't like, but I need your help, Lord. And, and you're my, I thank you. You sent the Holy Spirit to help me, to guide me, to lead me, to empower me. Thank you, Jesus. 
and walk in that every day. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Love the brethren. Be kind. Be gentle. Be patient. Because remember, thank you, Lord, for being patient with me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we might have a whole new concept of who you are. It says in the Word of God that nobody has seen God, but yet Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Thank you for showing us the Father as we read and study about the life of our Lord and as we walk in the Spirit each day with him, worshiping him, magnifying him and everything we say, we think, we do. And we thank you for developing that in us this next year in a greater way, that we might experience your love in a greater way, knowing that perfect love casts us out fear. We thank you now for the food that we're about to receive, and we just give you honor and glory. And all of God's people said, hello. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, hello, you love them.